What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About. Ooh. Today, we're doing the newest film from the Safdie Brothers, Uncut Gems. I'm glad you didn't set that up for me, because I would have <laughs> not hit that cue. I took care of it. No worries. Well, Uncut Gems. What What's to be said for this film? A lot, actually. <laughs> um, Follow-up to Good Time for the Safdie Brothers, Ooh. which... Personally, I loved Good Time. Yeah. That's an amazing film. If you haven't seen Good Time, go check it out. Robert Pattinson, you know, um, that guy gets a lot of, you know, association with like Twilight and shit, but he's really becoming a great actor. Definitely. A guy who I like to see, you know, any project that that he's in. So Good Time was an amazing film. I was really excited for Uncut Gems. Adam Sandler in this serious role, which he's done before. Um, Punch Drunk Love is an amazing film. Yeah. And like a lot of comedians, when Adam Sandler's given a, a good script and a, a good part, he usually can act pretty well. Um, Rain Over Me, that's another great Adam Sandler film if you haven't seen it. So, Liar Witch Stories? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, uh, didn't, I saw a little bit of that, but you know, I, I enjoy Sandler in the dramatic roles. I was really excited to hear about this. The trailer dropped. I was really excited when that came out. I loved the trailer. Saw the film, and psh, one of the best of the year, in my opinion. I liked it. Didn't love it. Okay. But that's also the same feeling I had towards Good Time when I first saw it. Right. I didn't like it. Or I didn't love it at first. Loved it at second viewing. Um, but you think it's a good movie. <clears throat> oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely a good movie. Going back to Sandler a little bit. You know, he gets a, a bad rap for uh, the movies he puts out. Right. But I, I, I feel like... Those comedies that he puts out, he puts them out to get the check. Right. I mean, he, that's his job is to act. You but, know, not everybody's a Daniel Day Lewis where they're going to be real. I think where I finally felt welcome <laughs> by everybody. Yeah! Specific about the projects that they they work with, you know. But when he gets a script that comes along, at, like a passion project, yeah. that's when you get the good Sandler. <laughs> And something about this, I heard Sandler, I think it was on Conan, I believe, you yeah. know, a couple I weeks ago, a week ago or whatever, and he was actually offered this part from the Safties 10 years ago before they were anybody, you yeah. know, and of course, like his agent or whatever saw the script and said, you know, we're not doing this. I mean, who are these guys? <clears throat> now that the Safties have kind of, you know, developed a reputation, um, you know, he took the role and man, I'm glad he did because I, I love this movie. Uh, yeah, I was surprised and interested to hear that. Just because, you know, Sandler plays it down now, but back then when you got these nobodies coming to you for a film like right, this, right. and they said that, you know, they tried, they knew they probably couldn't get him, so they went on and did other things, they sure. made their short films, they made good time, and then they're like, you know, let's 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 do it again. Sure, sure. Finally got Sandler, and uh, yeah, I don't know who else could have played this, I, I'm sure a lot of people, but he's, he's kind of signature for this sort of role. Yeah, I, he was perfect. I mean, now that I've watched the movie, I couldn't imagine anyone else doing it. Um, you know, the, the premise is Adam Sandler's character, Howard, uh, is a kind of a, I don't know, he works in the, the Diamond District of New York. He's got his own shop. They sell jewelry and stuff. And it's just kind of, you know, I, he's kind of a... Scumbag? Yeah, I mean, like... It's an interesting character because he's in all sorts of problems, and you kind of get that right off the the get go. You know, you understand that he's got these guys after him. He owes people money. Instead of paying him, he takes the money. He's making bets to try and you know double the money. I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of shit going on with this character. Yeah, it basically starts out, uh, I think, in like an Ethiopian mining right. site, and they come across this opal, this piece of opal. Yeah. And uh, it goes into like this this trippy little uh, scenario where it goes into the diamond and yeah. and transitions to Howard um, and he gets this opal to try and sell to pay off some of the debts he has and uh, from there I mean just keeps de-escalating going down down yeah. for this guy yeah one moment leads to another which leads to another and this this big gem this opal is you know really the focal point of the film right off the get go he's Got this at his store, and uh, Kevin Garnett who yeah. is actually a big part of this film. Yeah, and I knew he was in it. I didn't think he was going to be as big of a player as he was, but he actually did a really good job in this movie. Yeah, he did. I was listening to some interviews with both of them, and you know, he's talked about if he gets uh, the right stuff, he might yeah keep trying to act. Right, right. He's really good. Um, 
Anyways, he's in Adam Sandler's shop, you know, with his... So he's got... Lakeith Stanfield plays right. one of his... I guess you'd call him workers who brings in clients. And he brings in Garnett who wants um, to look at his diamonds, his jewelry sure, and everything. Sure. And he sees the opal and wants to buy it. So he's pretty persistent. Yeah, um, and Sandler's character does not want to sell this because he plans on taking the the gem and putting it up for auction. Which right. he thinks is going to fetch him like a million bucks, you know. Right. But Kevin Garnett's character is fixated on this. I mean, he wants this. He thinks it's going to be like a good luck thing. Yeah. So Sandler lends it to him because, you know, they got a big game coming up, the, the Celtics. This is Kevin Garnett is playing himself. And this, we should also mention that this is actually based in 2012. Right, right. When he's actually still playing and everything. Yeah. Um, probably give a spoiler warning from here on out just in case because we're going to talk a little more. Yeah, this is going to be stuff. in depth. Um, but yeah, he, he wants the opal. He convinces him to let him take it for good luck in the game and everything. But Howard wants something in return. So right. He let, he, uh, basically gives him his, uh, Celtics championship, championship ring. ring. Yep. And this is when things start to really go downhill. Yeah. Like I said, it doesn't take too long to jump into the idea of Howard being, uh, just a shady guy. I yeah. mean, he takes this ring from... Garnett, that he's basically using his collateral, and he takes it to the pawn shop so he can get money because Sandler's character owes money to these guys that are after him the whole time. He uh, pawns the ring, and all the while he's got his uh, loan shark of a brother-in-law on his ass for some, some money he owes him as well. Right, which that's a really interesting dynamic of this film because Sandler's relationship with his wife is Bad. almost non-existent. Estranged. You know? Yeah, they... Played by Adina Menzel. Right. Which, I will say, I've never seen her in anything other than knowing the fact she's in Frozen. Well, so to see her do some like real acting on right. screen is, is pretty interesting. Yeah, so we get that dynamic right off the bat. You can tell that they don't get along very well. They have, uh, what do they have, two kids? One yeah. kid? A couple kids? Um, two kids and a mistress. <laughs> yeah, so they're, you know, they're trying to coexist for the kids' sake, but you can tell they just hate each other. And meanwhile, Adam Sandler has got this girlfriend that he works with. Ooh. Julia Fox. Wow. What a fox. <laughs> yeah. Um, First real acting gig. It's all I need to see. I mean, <laughs> I'm convinced. She's uh, she's nice. But that's a really interesting dynamic because, like I said, they work together and, you know, he's got a lot going on. It's just uh, kind of like with Good Time. That's all I've seen from the Safties. I know they've done some other things, but Good Time was kind of like an adrenaline rush, you know. This is a little more, I would say, subdued, but... I would I would say it's yeah. just about the same sort of adrenaline. It's a little longer, so yeah. it's prolonged. Yeah, but, it's a little more drawn out. But it it's the whole thing is pretty much another you know yeah. adrenaline rush. It's kind of that same thing where this character's in so much shit that you just kind of can't wait to see what's going to happen next because you know it's all piling up on him. Like we kind of said, he's not really a good guy, right? But he's the anti-hero you cheer for, sure. And you kind of just you got to expect at some point he's going to catch a break of some sort right right and it never happens because when he does finally get the opal he takes it to the auction house yeah he uses his father-in-law who's played by judd hirsch right to bet against anybody including kevin garnett yeah. to drive the price up and sell it because he's been told right it's not going to be for a million dollars yeah and meanwhile we also have to say that after he loans that gem out to kevin garnett it's it's a big pain in the ass for him to get that back you know, you almost think Kevin Garnett's kind of dicking him around yeah. a little bit. Um, Sandler's character's waiting. He goes, "Where, where is my opal? Where is it at?" You know, they're going around to the Celtics practice facility. Like he's trying to track it down. Eventually, he gets it, and then, like you said, it leads into the auction thing. Where, you know, right off the bat, he finds out that it's not worth what he thought it was going to be. Yeah, and the uh, the auction goes on, not for very long though, right. because Garnett eventually gives up and uh his father-in-law wins it yeah so he's down more money right two hundred thousand dollars i believe yeah but you get kevin garnett who comes back and says you know i'll buy it for one hundred seventy-five thousand. sure and uh which sounds great but considering at the beginning of the movie sandler his character thought it's going to be a million bucks you know yeah so a hundred thousand is you know that's chump change compared yeah. to what he was expecting this is a uh very Jewish movie. You've got <laughs> it is. you've got Jewish directors with Jewish actors. Uh, the wife will not divorce him until after Passover. Right. Um, 
I mean, Judd Hirsch, he, there's this whole scene with uh, him and the, the Jewish family. It's just crazy Jewish New York film. Right. It, it encapsulates that whole uh, culture, I guess, sure, really sure. well. Kind of like the dog-eat-dog, dog, you know, Diamond District sort of thing where it's really intense. There's a lot of guys kind of fighting for the competition of selling things and pawn shops. And, you know, it's very competitive. Even when he goes in to <clears> take... Um, Garnet's ring. He's, you know, they're bartering back and forth. Hey, how much am I going to get for this? You know, it's it's a disaster, really. Right. And we're kind of jumping a little bit, but um, there is the part where he bets on Kevin Garnett, his points, his all these different stats throughout yeah. the game, uh, and he wins. Right. So you know, hey, good thing. Yeah. Sandler's going to get some money. Right. But his brother-in-law and his cronies take them away and tell them they stopped the bet. They yeah. placed a stop on it. Yeah. No money. Right, right. Which adds a new layer to his uh his debt. And these guys are following him around since for the you know, since the the movie begins. They're they're kind of on his ass. They pop up and you know, it kind of escalates. Mm-hmm. Um one part, you know, they literally knock Sandler out right in the middle of the street in New yeah. York. I mean, it's it's kind of a gradual progression, and you know those guys are going to swing back around and, and, pit, and play a big part into the climax of the film, for sure. There's really no positives. There's really no happiness no. to it. i got to say, though, I like the the character of Howard. You know, he's, yeah. he's not likable, but he's memorable. Yeah. Like, he's a great character. It's complex. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very well done. Yeah. Well, going on the uh, whole thing about having real people in this movie, you've got... Uh, small little cameos from like Mike Francesca. Yeah, New you've York al- Sports Radio. Yeah, strange. You've also got the weekend in there for a short bit, which, um, like we said, is based in 2012. So it's probably I don't listen to the music, but it's probably like at the beginning of sure. that guy's career. Sure. And he goes to a party with Julia Fox. It's the weekend doing a concert, and he gets into a fight with the guy. Yeah. And it's just like adding those real people into right. these scenarios is just kind of interesting because. People like Kevin Garnett in the weekend, they're putting their uh, reputation on the line in something like this. Sure. So uh, I think it's memorable to have the balls to just play yourself in yeah. like an exaggerated role. Sure. It's interesting. Yeah, they do a really good job too. So this is all kind of leading up to, you know, this big thing at the end where the climax. Yeah, these much. guys, like I said, have been following him around. He owes them money, so Kevin Garnett buys this opal from Sandler's character. Yeah. And instead of just paying these guys, you know, just giving them something at least to like, you know, say, hey, I'm going to pay you. He puts all this money on the game that Kevin Garnett's playing in. Very intense. Very intense. It's very intense. It uses real life highlights from the playoffs from that year. Right. It's uh, really interesting how they incorporate it. And it's actually an interesting scenario because he, these guys show up at his shop at the end. Yeah. And he kind of comes up with this plan where he meets his girlfriend, and they're both, you know, on different windows in this building, and he hands the money to her. He wires her up to Vegas so she can take this money and put it on the game. So she goes directly to Vegas, places all this money on the game. She doesn't really know what she's doing, you know. All just, this happening in real yeah, time. Yeah. As you're seeing the highlights, you're seeing her putting the money down, you're seeing Howard holding these guys hostage. Right. Um, so these guys are at his shop. They can't get in. Yeah. You know, so they're kind of stuck outside. He's in. He's got the TV going. And I mean, this is where it's really intense. Really, really intense. Yeah. I mean, point. it's really sort of like masterful tension building. Sure. Because there's no, like, I don't think there's loud music, loud tension building music. No. There I'm, might be some, yeah. but it's not this, you know, your, your big blockbuster type of stuff. But right. The tension is built naturally from the scene. And yeah. the actors and yeah. the tone and everything. But, I mean, these guys are pissed because they can't get into him. And, you know, he, they know that he's got this money and it, they need it from him. And, you know, then he says, look, fellas, I made the bet. You're going to sit out there and we're going to, you know, we're going to watch. I'm going to win. You know, yeah. He's very confident that he's going to win the bet. <clears throat> yeah. And he does. He does. So he's excited. <laughs> and, celebrating. And his moment of elation. Yeah. He's so excited. He won, won the bet. He's going to be able to pay these guys what they need. Meanwhile, he's been he's had them locked out the whole time. So in this moment, he opens the door. These guys come in, and you're thinking, yeah, oh, okay, well it's over. He's gonna give him the money and move on. Right. Well, these guys are so pissed at this point. 
They've been. It's just one guy, really. Right. It really is. You know, this guy's been chasing around the whole movie. They've just been lied to, and at that moment, you know, Sanders' character is wiped out. Very kind of shot right in the face. Well, I mean, I figured when he opened that door, I'm like, dude, what, what, something's going to happen. What yeah. else is going to happen? Right, because these guys are fed up. They don't care that he won the bet, you know. Yeah. They're saying, dude, enough already. We've had enough of this game, you know. But what what's even more interesting is his brother-in-law protests to what he does. Right. So he shoots the brother-in-law, too. Yeah, it's kind of like The Departed, you know. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's just wiped out at the end. Yeah, you know? kind of an intense ending scene and yeah. the, the shot goes into his wound and does that hallucinatory thing that right. happens at the beginning and right. that's really kind of it yeah so I mean you know it ends with we've got his girlfriend she's in Vegas she's won the bet I she's mean she's got, got, no got all clue. the money you know she's got no clue either. so what happens does she go back to New York and you know I'm sure she goes back right um, does she love him though I don't know. You and know it, uh, somebody's going to be waiting there for her, though. I mean, you know, it's... There's a lot of questions left unanswered, right. but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. No, I mean, I like that. You know, it's kind of... Not everything's spoon-fed to you, but like I said, you know, you you don't really feel sympathy for Sandler's character. It's... <laughs> you just feel enjoyment from the story, really. Yeah, it's, it's just a thrill ride, basically. I mean, very yeah. exciting. Very exciting film. Yeah, so all in all, I mean... Thought, like quick thoughts what what are some things that you liked about it specifically I, I love the energy just like with good time you know I, it was I was never bored never once was I bored the complexity of the story with this character you know owing all this money but he's also addicted to gambling which is yeah. a real problem for a lot of people and yeah. you know instead of paying he's betting and it was just exciting I mean it was I was excited by it the whole time you know yeah I enjoyed the kind of fast uh score that was in there it's right. just like really unique filmmaking from the safety brothers yeah there's really no sort of structure to it it's just a bunch of events that right kind of equal to a fi- finale which i guess that's every movie but it's the way it's done is not like your your usual three-act structure and, and you know the safety brothers have kind of develop that sort of pretentious not them but like the pretentious a24 film lover fan base where yeah oh my god the safties but him and re and i honestly can't Robert. even i can't even say anything bad about it because the two films that i've seen from them have been like phenomenal well so. and listening to them too they're very modest and yeah. humble and you know yeah. what i mean though like that audience base I, it's like definitely. a24 and the safties yeah. and neon lights and yeah. synth and yeah, but I mean, but they, the movie doesn't feel pretentious. No, it's a great film. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Now that we talked about it, talked it out, I yeah. I think I'm enjoying it right. more. Please, more dramatic Sandler rules. The guy can fucking act his ass off. He's a great actor. I, I mean, between this Punch Drunk Love, I mean, I dig him. Yeah, he's great for all the Sandy Wexlers and you know Jack and Jills. Grown you get a lot of those, but if you look at Sandler's filmography, there are some real gems that are kind of sprinkled in, and I mean. Uncut this, gems. Wow, wow! <laughs> this is honestly an award-worthy performance. Will he win one? No, probably not. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm not sure. I can't see him winning an Oscar for this. But I can't see him beating Joaquin. I think he was phenomenal. I mean, I would give him the Oscar. It's uh, the the male it's performances that I've seen this a year. Stacked year. It's the best I've seen this year. Yeah. Uncut gems. Safety brothers. I'm excited to see what the Safties will continue to do. Um. I'm totally on board. Yeah. You know, I was worried this might get a little overhyped for me, but I loved Good Time. So the, the two for two for me. I mean, the two that I've seen are fantastic. Yeah, two for two for me. Uh, Robert Eggers, two for two. Yeah. Ari Aster, <laughs> one for two. There's a lot of uh, good, promising young oh. filmmakers out there. I think at this very moment, we may not see it, but we're in a sort of special time for. For films, right? Directing and films, and you know, for all your uh, all the crap that's out there, there's a lot of oh yeah. Say the word again. There's a lot of gems out there. There really is, and this is one of them. Uncut gems. Let us know down below what you guys think. Um, I feel like a lot of people are loving this movie. It's something I really haven't seen slammed anywhere. Rightfully so. It's a great film. We'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, that does it for another episode of Let's Talk About. Thank you guys for watching. See ya. This is me. This is how I went.